Hello everyone, and welcome back to No Man's Land's First Survivor Roleplay, and we've got a busy day ahead of us. We've got our first full load trailer of silage, and I think we've got about another 120 or so thousand litres of silage in there. Have a little look here. 112,000 litres, so that's going to be another three, maybe four trips after this one. And the corn is looking good. It's not quite ready to be forage harvested, but that should be ready in February, if not March. We'll run for a bit of power on the initial get go. But yeah, so we have been a little bit busy getting this all sorted, and also we've officially got a little residential town area. So we're going to have a little look at that. They are starting to expand now and grow as us, ourselves, we become prosperous. We're providing something for the local economy and we're incentivizing people to come in. Because obviously we sell goods now, we sell eggs, we sell grain, we sell silage, we sell timber and all that. And we also like to support local businesses like with um, Farmer William B's workshop. There's a little farm over there and yeah. But yeah, from what I've been told and heard, there is a residential area and a little industrial area of some little factories and that, so we'll take a little gander over there and have a little look. Oh, actually it's over here. Ooh, interesting. Let's go and have a little look in here. I should best have our beacons on as well. But yeah, see the power is the tractor is struggling for some traction, but that's a solution for another day. So yeah, so we got a little story yard, got some parking spaces, got a great plant. Ah, uh, what's this? A uh, sea factory. So a second feet sea factory. I'm not sure. And we got a farm production area. So I think this little mill here could produce what can it produce we can have a little look I think where's the entrance is it around here I should have perhaps a look on my little PDA here so we go to farm production so yeah could actually take pretty much everything so we can make ice cream we can make flour we can make french fries spaghetti salad oat milk oatmeal we can make popcorn with our corn and that. We're not actually we're not actually should be economically viable actually. It's not the biggest production, only a thousand litres per month, so that's gonna be a bit of a grind, but actually let's just look at the prices for corn and popcorn. Corn's about nine hundred or so per fowl, and what about popcorn? So if we go down here, popcorn, yeah, it's only marginally better, so don't think we'll do popcorn, but it's a good, good idea to do in the future. Actually, if we get to the point where we can have like, multiple fields, multiple tractors and harvesters and that, well, perhaps not so much multiple harvesters and that, but, you know, like, if we had the capacity to diverse our in sort of our fields and that, like, some of it, it's purely for pure income for the farm, making bulk crop like soybeans, may silage with the corn and all that, then some of it can be subsidised at a fee of course by the production plant and that and so yes yeah, so we'll use some of our field to make for popcorn, oatmeal, whatever the community needs. So and here is our little residential area, so it's only I think it's just some flats and that, and some of the local shops and that, and the inn and that, so... Yeah, we've already actually got people moved in. Nice! So yeah, I've got a little sweet shop. And I think that's the shopkeeper's house there. Got some little offices, and of course, as any community needs, it needs a tavern. A local inn. Hopefully I can pop in at some point with some... Hopefully they need some nice apple cider. I am a cider lover. That's what well, a bit of a Scotch whiskey and a Jack Daniels fan, so hopefully sort of sell those or at least sell the cool variety of those. 
that's the thing, perhaps we could have a brewery in here as well. Obviously there's going to be some limitations to that, but... Of course with all the license fees and that, yeah, sort of anything, anything nowadays, trying to get a liquor license. Even to make liquor requires a lot of red tape and that takes... Best part in nine to twelve months you get off the ground properly, or at least ninety to one hundred twenty days for team get approval of the license. Let alone even getting it started. Oh, that's the legal system for you folks, I'm guessing. But anywho, we got our first load of silage, and as we've done many, many times before, this is our pretty much our main income at the moment until we get the corn in. Also, we've got the drill up here because there's opportunity to get a nice upgrade. But yes, yeah, so that is 11,400. That shouldn't be too bad for price, actually. Yeah, for special for this time of year, so we can make another 33 grand or so. So we should be around the. What's it? 86, 100, 600, 1600, 20 grand mark? And then we'll send that drill with, because, actually we'll pull over here because I want to sort of show you what I'm on about. Sort of being browsing around. Of course, this is our current seeder. Three meet no, four meters, sorry. It's going to take forever to get our new field planted. And we want to get it planted today. No ifs, no buts, no coconuts about that. So, obviously leasing, we can lease. Obviously, there is a limitation to how much we can lease. And the ideal world are oh, something like this. 12 meters, 108 horsepower, but 165 grand. But then even something like this, perhaps we could consider, but again, even when we sell the size, that's gonna be all of our money gone. Nothing's in the used market. Chance are it's not gonna pop up anytime soon. No me and my luck, nope. However, we can get a 6 meter seeder that holds 2800 litres of seed only 160 horsepower requirement do it then was our 6 meters and it only costs 44 grand so we can buy it now and I think potentially if I wanted to we could buy another plot of land afterwards but I'm not going to do that yet because I want to save the money because potentially there is a chance of a cheap forage harvester I love to have something like this, but we don't, again, we should have the money for it, but this on the other hand, we do. The Forge Treaty E281C, 64 grand. So yeah, it's different variations in colour. So that can do grass, sugarcane, so I think that's chaff and yeah, chaff and silage and straw. Actually, how big is the tank for this silage additive? 20 the year, so uh, we can get different headers. So we can get a combinable header to obviously to mould chip. And we do have a mower pickup. And we do have a little header for. So that, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's gonna be six. So that's gonna be what seventy nine, eighty grand. So potentially eighty grand plus the forty four grand. So if we buy it today, we're gonna be just outside of our margins. However, we've got the eggs on the way, and also I want to get into greenhouse production because, again, I won't have another passive source of income because. The thing with this far, we need to diversify our income, get more animals in, get chickens, get cows so we can breed them, sell them, also make manure and sorry and sell at the sorry sell point. Also we could use it to potentially fertilize our fields. But yeah, also we want to get into grape production at some point. Get some cheap grape vines in, if you know what I mean. But again, it just all costs money now, but to be honest, with the amount of... I mean, it'd be interesting how much silage we can get. That's the thing, I'm hyping this all, hyping this all up, but... 
I'm sort of worried that. Actually, one thing I'm worried about is our fuel, actually. Ooh, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> but, yes, actually, you know what? We can order something on our PD system, have it delivered to the shop, and we'll have some diesel barrels. But then again as well, with everything with the moment set, with silage and that, I do want to try to make silage bells again. That's the thing, we need to re yeah, this all, fermenting it, and the fermenting process, not an issue for me. However, the extraction is a problem. It takes some time for it to be done, so... Also, again, I want to plant more trees so I can take more trees down. But yes, as of everything, it's time and money, and at the moment we are sort of limited on both factors on that, so yeah, not too sure what to do there. But yeah, I think in, especially over like, the next 12 months when we get our soybean, soybeans in. So yeah, if we go and have a little look, so yeah. This should net us quite a substantial amount of silage. I think with all this being planted soybeans, this will be a huge mother load, I think. Again, we could do corn silage, but I think we're already doing corn silage there. In terms of what we do after that, I'm thinking something like wheat perhaps, get a bit of straw in, bathe it in that potentially and have it for some cows. And like with our grass area here, we need to borrow something in terms of a mulcher. Not a mulcher, um, sump grinder to get rid of all these sh awkward stumps. Because yeah, like, so things like greenhouses, we have a little look. We can get a hydroponics one. A bit expensive at 10 grand, but it does it at twice the rate of everything else, the basic ones. However, it does require liquid fertilizer. So I'm thinking we could get the open air garden. The fertilizer makes part speak to Farmer DB about that. Try to get a good deal on that. Manure, there is a manure answering buy point at the shop, which I forgot to show you folks. We'll have a look at that later. And obviously, with the usual strawberries, tomatoes, and there, of course, make sunflower and potatoes. And only two grand a buck. I've seen clear stumps out. Have it's one there, one there. Yeah, have it sort of close to the tree line, somewhere like that. So one. Yeah, easy to. May have to move it for because of that fence. Oh, ran out of silage, have we? So yeah, let's go and just move this back. Again, this is also another issue with this as well. It's the constant manoeuvring this back and forwards. There we go. I will move the trader. But yeah, so anyways, I will continue on with this. I'll do a little short time lapse off getting this all done, and then we can look at buying our new drill.
trip with the forage wagon, that was a bit of an experience trying to get some silage into there, but anywho we've managed it fine and we're also taking it to the Schultz's sell everything containers because they offer a slightly better price, only something like 12 quid per thousand a litre, so we're only looking at literally what, like 120, 250 French quid difference with this load, so is it worth it? Of course it is, because there's an extra French quiz we didn't have before. And that pretty much could cover like fuel like yeah, fuel like fifteen hundred years it costs a thousand pounds or a thousand and fifty each, so yeah, it's definitely worth it. Every penny helps, even now. So we go and sell this. Uh, we should get, what, about 8 or so grand, 8250 perhaps? Can we hit the 120 mark? Oh, only so close, so 9.4 basically, so... Not too bad of a hole, I think, personally. And actually I was wondering, could the pickup manage the diesel load perhaps like if I try to lose it on with the forklift or something could it manage it? Hopefully so because obviously we could do with a flatbed trailer. It doesn't have to be expensive, it doesn't have to be all glitz and glamour now. So yeah we'll take this up here, we'll leave the trailer up here for now, we'll go and collect it at some point. I'm sure does Doris won't mind us just leaving it here for the rest of the month. Actually luckily we have not seen any snow yet so we haven't been quite shut out yet but so yeah obviously ahead of us there there are Surrey and nearby points. Imagine it three point linkage is at the other side. But yeah by two those of diesel so that was six twelve barrels each that's gonna last us a little bit because that first load lasts us quite a while so so go ahead and let's do a little repair repair you repaint you and sell you get a bit of money back from that and now we uh, where is it? Two cedars. That's the one we want. So options. BKT tires. Now keep it standard. Color variants. We'll keep it blue. That changes the cover. Yeah, we'll keep it red, why not? So 44,500 or so. That leaves us with 86 grand. And yeah, it should be enough for the forage harvester now, so... But of course we need to get some seed. And I know... Farm Really B offers a good price, so we'll go and speak to him. 
Ooh, look at that. I do like that tarp action. But yeah, this is a six meter drill. This is 15% more of a working width, so it's going to be 50% faster in theory, so... But yeah, I just liking how the town is starting to improve now. And I've heard they've got some plans for housing up on the hills there, on the far back. And I think I've also heard they're going to get a big like, old forestry mold train like, to demolish some trees. So that'd be good to see that in action, potentially, if we ever fly by and see it in action. So, where is it to? I think it's that side of there next to the water tank, so... How much is it going to cost us? I actually have no idea, but... I know it's going to be far cheaper than buying pads individually, so... At the end of the day, I am not complaining how much it's going to cost, potentially. So go reverse up. So 2800 litres, that costs us 1800 quid. Not that bad of a price. So try to squeeze out the gate. Last thing with doors, it is a bit narrow for these gates. So let's, let's not smash these gates on our way out, please. We can help it. Go. That's better. But yeah, we're definitely chasing the clock now. Sun's starting to go down. Winter could be here any time now. Snow can hit. Like, what's the temperature at the moment? Let's see what the weather forecast says. Six degrees, and we've got snow tomorrow. So that is why we need to get this our butts into gear, basically. But yeah, we'll head back to the farm, and then we'll get started on the seeding of the soybeans. A bit of a daunting task, but I am willing to put the work in. And here we are, our soon-to-be money soybean field. So yeah, we've got the seeder on the back. And I think with the tools as well, it'll definitely work out well just to have that extra bit of traction. So yeah, we'll get it all lined up. Hopefully we're still within the property boundary as well. That's the last thing I want here to go and plant it and then say, oh, we can't harvest it and whatever, <laughs> but... But yeah, I think if we do a few boundaries and that, then potentially we can try and get someone from the town out if they want a bit of work and that. Then we can offer them work, we've got the money for it, so... go, just got everything set up, and let's go. But yeah, this is definitely a game changer for us. Yes, there's only an extra two meter working width, but at the end of the day, it's going to make all the difference. As well, especially at doing that 10-11 miles an hour. It's struggling, it's like, sort of here the gearbox, definitely having to work now. That's what you could do with a slightly powerful tractor as well, having a second one. Either we can sell this, get something a bit more oomph, but it's got to have a front loader attachment, or here a cheap, more powerful tractor perhaps. Oh, a bit of timber there. Let's go scoot you out of the way. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. But then also, we're going to have to roll this as well. See if we look at our yield bonus, 96%, we can get up to 100. Uh, where should I shove it to? I'll shove it here for now. I was thinking, do we want to roll it? it has yeah, 95%. Potentially, yep, yeah, but yeah, that's just the thing. Again, it's going to be the cost of it. How much does Aurora cost? Will it cost us to lease? For Simple one. We're looking at two grand outright. What's that? Twelve meters. What about these other ones? Five meters. Yeah. 
will we see, I think we will see the return in that in the investment. But yeah, I think we'll skip rolling for now perhaps. Depending on, yeah. I think, yeah, we'll skip it this year. And we'll just see how things go now. So yeah, we're literally running edge of our property line, so I am thinking good about this. I think it wants to do it then was an hour. But it's just slowly holding back a little bit, sort of like dip into nines and tens. But hey, even at nine ten miles an hour, I am happy with this. This is definitely a game changer for us. This has made all the difference and Yeah, we're gonna definitely see the benefits. Now we're going down here, we're hitting eleven miles an hour. There we go, try to get on the edge from missing. Yeah, little strips like that we've missed, we'll go over that at the end. That's why like the seat usage, we are not using that much seat as well, so... Hopefully we can do it with one load. If I just do a second trip to Formula B's shop, then... You know what, that's fine. 1800 for a full load. Perhaps I'm going to pop there at anyways, even for not empty. Completely empty and just refit it anyways. But it's definitely worth it. But that's why well, that's the good thing about having the seed production as well, because we can use that, use some crop or whatever it needs. And just try to become a bit more self-sufficient by sort of giving a plant the materials, we'll pay a fee for it as we always do. Get it all sorted out and then have somewhere at the farm to store the seeds. Potentially. Well, of course we've got to because we can't just keep it there. Because even if they sort of have a little co-op, the uh, sea cooperative there, they're going to charge us. That of course have store fees, make sure it's all stays at a certain temperature range, make sure it doesn't grow and all that prematurely when it's needed, and just yeah, all sorts of other things as well. But yeah, like these trees here. I think I will cut these trees here down. I know I've said before I won't, but so I'm just going to chop these little ones here down because it's going to be in the way for sure. Timber. There we go. Spruce. Sprucing things up. I think, yeah, we'll just go sort of straight up here, I think, actually. I think I don't mind doing this myself, rather than not having a worker in. Just, you know, chill in the cab, this is some tunes, and just get this all done, but... Anyways, regardless, I think we'll do one more time-lapse, then we'll call it a day. So, yeah, we'll get this done, and I'll see you folks in a short moment.
next day and have a look at that. Our soybeans are growing at last. Let me have a little look here and yep, they are growing. And actually they're fully fertilized actually as well. Are they? Yeah, a few spots of yeah, but overall they have been fully fertilized. That is actually really good. And your oils is very good. Our corn is ready to be foraged. Foraged, is that word? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, look at that. Start seeing changing colours now, that is what we like to see. Inspect the crop. Oh look at that, the corn's looking good. Definitely ready to be foraged. So yeah, I think what we'll do is take this up to the shop. I forgot we had 10,000 years of soybeans. We'll go ahead and sell this. You get about 20 or so grand from this. And then next time we'll speak to D and... Actually not D, sorry, I'm Doris. And yeah, actually we'll speak to D anyway. Because there are some eggs they potentially as well get an extra few grand in. But yeah, we'll see Doris. And um, yeah, we'll talk about ranging, getting a little forage harvester in. Then we can forage that, get some delicious silage. And if... oh, I should be chaff, not silage. So we'll soon need to find somewhere to ferment it. So perhaps a bunker silo, or possibly a new building that's going to be put into the, apparently by the locals or this month. Apparently got a little fermenter coming in today that acts as a little bio well, it's gonna be sent to the biomass heater and that so because yeah, I've got I guess it's some form of heater, not sure. It's really not a biogas plan, it's definitely chilly, so so or yeah, so it's forecasted for today. But only for about an hour or two, so we're gonna have massive amount of snow this year. So yeah, pretty temperate climate. <laughs> that's the people warming for you, but yeah, so but yeah, I'd be interested to see like how this area develops into the new housing states like, on the hills, and that's gonna be interesting. What I may do is try to ask if I can get some work in, like say if we on oh, no, this if we fork out the cost of said equipment to get it. Like say the little harvester and that. And uh no no take all the trees down and keep some of it for ourselves perhaps who knows but yeah look at that 24 grand so yeah let's go and park this up here we need to go back to get further because we need to pick up these diesel barrels today and we'll go and see Doris and let's see what we can arrange here and there we are this is what we've got and Yep, I've realised there is a small problem with this. Don't get me wrong, it looks all good in that. I didn't pay attention to what's at the back of this. It's a pin lock hitch, not a, not a little ball point hitch. So you can't mount it to this, because obviously it's a ball mounted. Nor we could mount it to this, because it requires a PTO. Is it a PTO and a ball pin, or is it just a PTO? Yeah, it's a ball, ball pin and a PTO, so it's not a pin lock. Perhaps it was a pin lock we could get away with it, because we don't need the PTO. To, obviously, the PTO is just to make the power the pickup, but we don't need that, so... Potentially, that's going to be a slight issue we have to deal with. It involves getting a worker in. But yeah, overall this sounds right. Maneuvers quite well because I was even steering at the back, so. But yeah, obviously, I think he will get a worker to get this going in that, and in theory, this should be the right header. Pretty sure this is the right header I bought, so if not, I'll always get it. Replacing that, so if we go to yeah, four charge header. So this is the right one because there is a combinable header which is slightly smaller than this. Is that 
three meters. This is a four point six. But yeah, overall happy with it. A bit of a pain to be harvest, but as far as the only other option that we had, since we're forage harvesting this, would have been what? I think there is a portable harvester. I think uh, where is it? Will be under here. Forage headers, possibly. Where are you two? Do, 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 do. Yeah, something like this. But again, we're going to have the same issue of it's just a pin lock at the back, so... To be honest, a bit of a hindsight on my part. But hey -oh, it is what it is. But anyways, this is where we're going to leave it today. Next time, we'll start the forge harvesting. <laughs> just look how we are in the cab, actually. Right, proper hunched over there. But yeah, that's where we're going to leave it today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, smash that button. Feel free to comment down below. If you want to share us, then please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to channel yet, then please sit down. But, for as you to do, I hope everyone has a nice day. But for now, this is before my voice stream. And I'll see you all very soon.